Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Let's paint a meadow landscape today using acrylic paints. We need the following colors for this painting. Cerulean blue, sap green, pale green, lemon yellow, burnt umber, black and white. Let's get straight to it. We'll start by painting a blue sky. You can either add some paint to the surface and spread it with a painting knife or you can use a wash brush. For this painting, my preference is to use the wash brush. Painting knives work better when you have to spread quite a lot of paint. Wash brushes work better when you have to spread a little amount of paint over a large area on the painting surface. You might have noticed that on a bright sunny day, the sky above your head is more blue than the sky that is nearer to the horizon. So we need more blue color at the top of this painting and less towards the horizon, which is somewhere near the middle. To achieve this effect, add a thin line of white paint on top of the blue paint, close to the bottom edge and blend together. Since we start from the bottom half of the blue, the top half will retain more of the blue color than the bottom half. We are not looking for a clean blue sky. We want the sky to have some indications of distant clouds. So don't worry about blending the white perfectly. Now clean the brush in water and lay it down. Next up is to paint some distant mountains. We need a bluish gray color for this. Mix together cerulean blue, a tiny amount of black and some white to create this color. Take this paint on a half inch brush and paint some mountain shapes at the bottom end of the blue color. As we are painting distant mountains, don't use any steep angles. Push lightly upwards at the top edges of the mountains with the brush to give the indication that there are some trees up there. Let's assume that the light falls on the right hand side of the mountains. Add some more white to the grey, mix well and apply this lighter shade on the right side of each mountain. Keep your strokes gentle and angular, not vertical or horizontal. With this shading, the mountains will begin to appear three-dimensional. It's time to create some foothills. These are very easy to paint. Let me show you. Add a little amount of black to the palette and mix it with sap green. This will create a dark green color. Now load a filbert brush with this dark paint and use firm upward strokes from the foot of the mountains to create the foothills. These upward strokes will help give the indication that there are some distant trees. Continue until the tree line looks dense. So far, we've been moving from top to bottom on this painting surface. It's time to switch things up a little bit. Let's paint some nearby grass. Mix a bit of sap green with a generous amount of lemon yellow to create a grassy green color. Do not add any water to this mix. Load this paint mix on a dry, flat nylon brush and create a grass line at the bottom of the canvas using firm upward strokes. Repeat until the grass line appears dense. Take the remaining grassy green color on the same nylon brush and apply between the far foothills and the near grass line. Use horizontal strokes. You don't have to cover the entire area in this color. We are looking for a patchy effect. We'll be painting this field with tiny yellow flowers. There is green grass underneath these flowers. This is why we needed to apply a light base layer of green 
before applying the yellow paint. Green is a strong color, so you'll still be able to see it through the yellow. Now, add some lemon yellow to the palette. Then clean the nylon brush and wipe it dry with a paper towel or a piece of cloth. Load the brush with lemon yellow and start tapping the painting surface. You shouldn't use any kind of strokes to paint the yellow flowers. Simply tap the brush. Cover the entire area using this technique. Notice that the patchy green areas are showing through the yellow. I'm going to use a hairdryer to make sure that the paint dries up quickly. You can do the same if you think the paint is wet. Let's paint a tree very close to our view so that our painting gets some depth and distance. Add some burnt umber, black and white to the palette next to each other. Do not mix the paints. Directly load all three colors to a quarter inch brush without blending. Press the bristles firmly onto the painting surface and use an upward stroke to paint the tree trunk while making sure that the white color is on the right hand side where the light is coming from. Notice that the tree trunk already has three colors on it. Give the tree some branches. Use a liner brush for small fine branches. Add a bit of water to the mix when using liner brush. Paint some highlights on the tree trunk using white and give the tree some roots. It's time to give this tree some leaves. We had added some pale green to the palette when we started painting, but we haven't used it so far. Add some lemon yellow and black to the pale green and mix well. This will create a dark green color. To paint the leaves, we are not going to use any brushes. Instead, we are going to use a piece of sponge. Remove all sharp edges on the sponge with your fingers before the application. Press the sponge firmly into the dark green mix. The sponge will draw in some paint and hold it, ready to dispense. Gently tap the branches of the tree to apply this paint. Do not press firmly. We don't need to paint all individual leaves on the tree. All we need to do is to give the indication that the tree has dark green leaves. We should remember that this tree is also getting sunlight. So we have to paint some highlights to indicate this. Add more lemon yellow to the palette, load it onto the sponge and apply similarly. If the sponge is still holding a lot of green, use a clean sponge. And with that, we have completed this simple landscape painting. I really hope you will try to create this and that you will find it easy. Let me know your feedback in the comment section below. And have a good day. Stay safe.